a dynamic doubleheader, kicking off the 50th season of Monday Night Football. The battle of defending division champs, Texan Saints. Hey, I was told there'd be a lot of Texans fans. There are. So this great game is complete with a marquee matchup of quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson insists this is the healthiest and best he's felt in his young NFL career. He is sounding so confident. And Drew Brees, the all-time leader in passing yards, captured that throne here on Monday Night Football. So what's the next record to fall in his 19th season? 60 minutes to Monday Night Football. Lots to do before kickoff. Of course, we've got the fan favorite back again. Come on, man, a showcase for the team that perhaps weren't firing on all cylinders week one. And will any of the catches featured in Randy's You Got Moss top what he claims was the best catch of the year in the offseason? Plus, J.J. Watt, one-on-one -on -one with Booker McFarland, the three-time defensive player of the year. Why could he be even better this year? Later, the city of New Orleans went so far as to hold a funeral to mourn the championship game lost to the Rams. Michelle feisner -Buck has the story of how the team and the city are moving on. Now, Sean Payton insists that he, he did not address the way the championship game ended and the end of last season with this year's team. 28% of the team is new. He just wanted to put that behind them. But as we join you back here in the Superdome, from the floor of the Superdome, Steve, do you believe there is a lingering effect? You've got to understand, I mean, in a small community, a small, New Orleans is a big city, but I mean, compared to New York or LA, but it, New Orleans fans, everywhere this team has gone, off season, the grocery store, to the parking lot, to anyone they see, the first thing they'll say is, that had to hurt. That's two years in a row. That's incredible. They got, we got ripped off for two Super Bowls. You can say, oh, we're not going to talk about it, but everybody else every day talks about it. So in my mind, you do, they don't know the effect. They don't know that it's going to be, there might be a little bit of a hangover. The one thing I will tell you about this team is they are mature. They are led by mature people, not only because they're 40, but just by the solid locker room that they've built with Sean Payton. If they have an hangover, if it does bother them, it'll bother them for a half. It'll bother them for a game, and then they'll fix it and move on. But I can't, I can't remember anything happening to a team two years in a row, like in Minnesota and here, where they were ready to go to the Super Bowl. Yes, yeah, a lingering effect, and you're talking about the critical times of the season when it happens two years in a row to the New Orleans Saints. And me as a fan sitting back, sitting there watching, <laughs> look at this woman. You got the fans in here with all the ref uniforms on tonight. I think yeah. they're trying to send a message <laughs> to the National Football League. Yeah, we knew we were going to see a whole lot of ref outfits. You know, Cam Jordan is one of those leaders. He said for a while he couldn't even look at black and white and couldn't go to a footlocker. Like, he couldn't <laughs> stand to see anybody dressed yeah. in black and white. Like, we're going to see a whole lot of this in here tonight. They're going to fill this stadium up with the black and white. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Lingering effect? Well, I would say yes, except I know Drew Brees, and I know no matter how painful you know, how last season ended. You know, he'll find a way to recalibrate, refocus everybody, use that as fuel, uh, use that as fuel. And I'll, I'll just say this too, like sometimes you go back, you talk about the last two years, you're gonna look at every little thing. Every little thing matters. You know, listen, I played in games where the officials had a role in the outcome of the game. It's a human game, it's a human, those guys are humans just like the players. Sometimes you play well, sometimes you don't. You gotta let it go, like yeah. as a player, you want the crowd to like buy into it and wear referee jerseys, fine, I get that. You know, it's gonna bring a little more energy to the stadium tonight, but as a player, you better let it go. You better turn the page, move on, and focus on the task at hand. And tonight, it's the Houston Texans, but this, this Saints team is a Super Bowl caliber team once yeah. again. And so if they're gonna let last year kind of trickle into this year, that's a mistake. But it filtered into their offseason, and it started the first weekend after when Sean Payton admitted that he spent the entire next weekend sitting around watching Netflix and eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> he was very regular, right? We all would do the same thing at the experience a traumatic weekend like watching? that. But you know what else he did? He pushed back the start of the team's offseason program to April 22nd. He pushed it back a full week because he recognized that everybody on this team needed time to heal. And we go back, Steve, and look at the great teams in history. So many times you need a game or a season like that to push you to the next level. And now this Saints team, they believe that this is the best team they've had 
in New Orleans in recent memory. And the thought in the back of their mind is, how many more do we have a shot with Drew Brees? You just have to take it. You can be 40. Oh, you'll be played play till he's 45. Sure. Not at the Super Bowl. So that's the other part of it. We can't have this happen again because we only have any more. We have one more year. Maybe two. Uh, that's it. We got to do it now. And Breeze is, so he's all about turning the negative into a positive. Turning a negative into a positive. A big task for Raiders Nation as we head out west to the sending drama. Dan Rossini will be working the sidelines for the second game of our doubleheader tonight. Diana, you've been in touch with John Gruden and Mike Mayock. What did they have to say about all of this? Yeah, Raiders GM Mike Mayock doesn't want to talk about Antonio Brown anymore. In fact, he said at this point, actions speak louder than words for the Raiders organization. But John Gruden, Susie, what a different story it is. He looks exhausted. It seems like he hasn't gotten sleep in weeks. This has been a roller coaster for him. He says he's done everything he possibly can to get Antonio Brown on this team. And of course, it didn't work out. And I asked him, would you do it again? He said, I'm not going to change who I am. I'm going to take the risks, and if there are guys out there that I believe can make this offense better, I'm going to go after them. But in terms of how Antonio Brown was going to be featured in this offense for this game, Gruden says they really couldn't do much. He wasn't a big part of this playbook. He asked Derek Carr, though. He says uh, he had a little bit more plays than you can expect. But Gruden, he said if there's a guy you want to see tonight, the breakout star is going to be the running back, Josh Jacobs. Susie? Okay, well, Diana, if there is an upside, they saved $30 million for Vegas. All right, Diana, we'll look forward to seeing you on the sideline tonight. Now, here are the Raiders wide receivers without Brown. Tyrell Williams takes over as the number one after he signed with Oakland as a free agent in March. J.J. Nelson is also in his first year with the team, although he is questionable tonight. We'll keep our eye on that. And Renfro was a fifth round pick in April. So I guess if there's an upside too, it's that AB wasn't around for all that much of training camp. Then it will be on the sidelines. Lewis Riddick will be up in the booth calling the game tonight with Steve Levy and Brian Greasy. So Lewis, you spent time with John Brood, with players, other coaches over the weekend. How did the mood strike you? Yeah, really, Susie, it strikes me as one where they're kind of asking the question, what's the big deal? It's more of a big deal to the people on the outside to the, than to the players and the coaches and the staff on the inside. And why is that? Because A.B. was never really around. He ne never really ingrained himself and entrusted himself to the people of this organization because he wasn't here. So they really have been really just trying to get ready for the football season and really formulate their roster, formulate their culture, formulate their plan for the season and I'll tell you what, on the defensive side of the ball in particular, I had one person say to me, hey, look, he wasn't going to make any tackles. He wasn't going to make any interceptions. He wasn't going to sack any quarterbacks for us. So we really don't see what the big deal is. We're just ready to get ready for this for this football game and see if we can get a, a win against a division opponent. And, Lewis, I've heard that the Broncos, they also didn't spend a ton of time on a defensive game plan to try to stop Brown. And, by the way, this defense looks like it could be pretty scary. What do you see as a key tonight? Yeah, this defense is is pretty scary, and really it's because of the fact that they have two of the best pass rushers in this 34 configuration of any in the NFL when you're talking about Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. And Brad Chubb really is poised to have a breakout, breakout year. He came within two sacks of breaking Javon Curse's rookie sack record a year ago, and he's one of those guys who's really, I think he's going to be in the spotlight tonight because of his combination of speed and power, and you see it here on your screen. This was in the preseason, him going up against Joe Staley, just beats him with an inside move. And, and it's just spectacular what he can do. Now, he's not going to always rush against Trent Brown. Von Miller's going to get Trent a lot. But Trent Brown, according to Von Miller, is one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL, regardless of whether you're talking about left tackle or right tackle. So whoever goes up against big number 77, you're going to have an all-night type of assignment, and good luck to you. But Von's one of the very best. Nobody has sacked the quarterback better than him since he came into the league. I mean, he's number one as far as that's concerned. But keep, a, keep on the lookout for number 55, Bradley Chubb. He's going to be a difference maker in this game. Chubb and Miller in a Vic Fangio defense. Pretty much a wow. So, Lewis, throughout the season, you're going to be here on the set with us. So before we let you go, we wanted to know your pick for the game tonight as we check out Taysom Hill. You know, he is the Swiss, Swiss Army knife. So what do you think? Can the Texans stop Hill and Breeze? Yeah, that's going to be a tough assignment. And you know how it is down there in New Orleans at the Dome in that environment. Like Drew Breeze really does 
thrive in that kind of environment. The defense plays above and beyond its normal talent level in that environment because it's like a rock concert. I mean, it's like a big party down there. And once they get rolling, that's going to be tough to stop. I am interested, though, to see what Houston looks like now that they're trying to really make a concerted effort to protect Deshaun Watson. You want to see just how J.J. Watt looks now that, once again, he's the primary guy with no Jadevian Clowney, although it's not something that J.J.'s not used to. But I still think it's just going to be a little bit too much. The momentum's just going to be too much. The crowd noise is going to be too much. And the attitude down there that the Saints play with is going to be too much. So I'm going to go with the Saints. It is pretty tough to beat. Lewis, we'll look forward to your call later tonight. And, of course, having you with us all season here on Monday Night Countdown. And as we continue from here at the Superdome, Alvin Kamara, well, it is his backfield now. Mark Ingram is in Baltimore. But can he truly carry the load? He has been one of the elites. All right, so can the Saints really bury the past? Michelle Beisner-Buck takes a journey to get to the root of the ill-fated finishes.